So, you realize the Wulin ain't nothing to fuck with, but you wanna know how to use these newcomers? Well then, look no further! Welcome to the final installment in a four-part series helping newcomers and inexperienced players get a handle on each of the heroes in For Honor. Keep in mind, I am no top tier or competitive player, and that this is a guide with, again, newer or more inexperienced players in mind both for learning how to play as and against the new Wu Lin heroes. We will be looking at the important moves and combos of each character, glossing over what is important, and leaving all the technical stuff out because other people have already covered that, and there's plenty of databases with that information already. Should that interest you, there are resources down in the description below that you can access. I'm also going to strongly recommend you check out Freeze for more For Honor related data, punishes, and analyzations. If you want to get good at the game and learn more than my basic guides have to offer, check him out. Now, without further ado, let's take one last dive into a crash course on the Wu Lin of For Honor. Everybody knows this hero's name, mainly because they won't stop shouting it. Tiandi is the vanguard of the Wu Lin faction. This T-posing hero has access to both variants of a two-hit chain, but really shines as a dodge specialist. Any basic attack recoveries can be cancelled with a dodge, or subsequently of course, a dodge attack. Tiandi has dash and dodge lights that have a superior block property, and are also undodgeable. Using the superior block property is a little bit harder to do on reaction, so it might be more prediction or luck based. Tiandi's dodge heavies are unique because of their extended dodge property, and because you can cancel these dodge attacks with a dodge or a another dodge attack. Tiandi also has a dash forward heavy that has hyper armor. By the way, any of these dash and dodge heavies can be just hard fainted as well. As for bashes, Tiandi has access to a palm strike and a super kick. The palm strike can be done from neutral by moving backwards and hitting guard break. It can be followed up with a guaranteed light attack or you can go for a heavy. The palm strike can also be done as a follow up to a light attack or a dodge light attack, but the attack must connect. Many Tiandis use this and the dodge attack quite frequently because they get to play the mind game of should you dodge or should you not dodge. If you dodge you might need a dodge attack, if you don't dodge you're going to get hit by the palm strike and a subsequent free light attack. The super kick can be used following up any heavy, dodge heavy or dash heavy even if it's blocked. The kick knocks opponents far, far away and is great for ledging, and it can really only guarantee a follow-up attack if it's near a wall. Oh, we ain't done with that kick yet. That kick is cancelable with a dodge. Yeah. Tiandi's zone attack hits the opponent's left guard twice, however the second attack can be cancelled or soft fainted into a kick by hitting guard break which again can be dodged out of. So basically if you're gonna take one thing away from this, Tiandi has commitment issues to their entire moveset and can pretty much cancel out of almost anything. Finally, Tiandi has a sprinting heavy that hits the top guard. Moving on now to the punishes of Tiandi. Heavy parries will guarantee a light attack or a zone into kick mix-up. Light parries guarantee a top heavy. And if you land the superior block dodge light attack, you can actually follow it up with a guaranteed palm strike and of course light attack. Guard breaks guarantee a side heavy. And wall splats net you a top heavy. Out of stamina parries will give you right light into heavy because the right light is the only one that will catch the opponent as they fall. And if your guard is to the right, out of stamina right and forward throws will give you light into heavy as well. Finally, out of stamina throws against a wall will guarantee light into heavy. Tiandi is decent enough though in 4v4s when ganking or getting ganked. The super kick is a great asset when used correctly, as even if it is dodged, the opponent is technically now a sitting duck for your allies, but you also don't want to kick your opponents out of the way of your allies' attacks. 
Like all the other Wulin, Ubisoft added a few new, I'll call them signature feats that no other heroes from the other factions have. For example, the first feat in tiers 1, 3, and 4 basically make Tiandi very hard to kill once you get them down to half health. Now, I kind of alluded to this earlier, but what frustrates me the most when fighting a Tiandi is because most seem to rely on the Palm Strike and the Dodge Lights, and that's it. Again, seeing as the Palm Strike must be dodged, and the Dodge Lights can't be dodged, and a match with poor connection can really feel overwhelming at times. The Dodge Lights, if I'm honest, come deceivingly quick, however, the Palm Strike can be dodged definitely on reaction. You just have to dodge as soon as you see the Tiandi pull back. Remember that Tiandi can also dodge immediately after fainting due to dodges cancelling recovery time. Essentially, it means that any heavy could be fainted into a dodge attack. Nice! However, dodging any heavies that end a chain, including those dodge heavies, seem to guarantee a guard break. Correct me if I'm wrong. So basically, it's gonna take a bit of patience, maybe a little bit of prediction work, and parrying, right? Like with any other hero, if you're good at predicting what your opponents might do, and of course, parrying and blocking, you'll probably have no problem against the Tiandi. We're now gonna take a look at the rework Lawbringer should have gotten, the thickness even Shugo is jealous of, a pseudo hidden stance Nabushi would love, and unblockable chain finishers borrowed from Berserker. JJ seems to be the complete package, but let's see. Like Tiandi, Jiang Jun has every variation of a two-hit chain. However, the opening heavies have hyper armor later in the attack, and the finisher heavies are unblockable. JJ's zone attack spins and hits the opponent's left guard. Similar to Nabushi, blocking downward will move you backwards with dodge frames and enter a special stance. In this stance, you regain stamina faster and, yeah, you can even perform it while out of stamina. You can cancel heavies into this stance or cancel the recoveries of light and heavy attacks with it to regain stamina and create distance. However, unlike Nabushi, you can only perform one attack from this Sifu stance. You get to do a zone attack that hits the right side instead of the left, and it starts chains. JJ also has a dash heavy that can start chains, as well as be soft fainted into a shin kick that guarantees a light attack. But he also has dodge heavies too. However, these aren't your average everyday normal dodge heavies. These are advanced dodge heavies. Much like Tiandi, they have an extended dodge property and can be soft fainted with a light attack that hits the opposite side. Both of these dodge and dash heavies can also be cancelled and start chains. Sprinting and hitting heavy will do a double whirlwind strike hitting the top with the second attack being faintable. We now take a look at JJ's impressive punish game. Jiang Jun actually has two special moves he can perform after any parry. By holding guard break, he can choke the stamina out of his opponents. It will knock them down if they are out of stamina, which guarantees a slightly delayed light into top heavy, but if they're not out of stamina, it'll actually wall splat them if, of course, there's a wall behind them. Keep that in mind when we discuss the wall splat punishes later on. After parrying, you can also hit zone to get a sweeping unblockable attack that is great for clearing enemies away. Heavy parries give JJ a light, but the zone does more damage, and don't worry about your stamina because of the Sifu stance. If you're fighting a hero with a reflex guard, your other option is to choke them, and throw a zone attack for maximum stamina, drain, and damage. A light parry will guarantee JJ a top heavy for his max damage, and guard breaks will guarantee a light or a zone attack. And you have two options off of wall splats. If you're far away enough from the wall, you are guaranteed a top heavy. However, you can do the dash forward heavy, cancel it into the shin kick, which will wall splat, and guarantee the follow up top heavy for more damage. But, higher stamina cost, again, no big deal. But the biggest thing is in 4v4s, it's a much bigger revenge feeder. As for the out of stamina punishes, out of stamina parries will give you the zone into unblockable top heavy and out of stamina throws max punishes are actually dependent on your guard direction. Forward throws with a guard to the side is a zone into top heavy, but if your guard is to the top, side and forward throws will net you back to back top heavies. In 4v4s, 
Zhang Jun is pretty damn strong, don't at me saying otherwise. While many of the attacks are slow, the fact that the heavies have either hyper armor or unblockable properties, and the fact that they're so easy to access, makes them a step above many other heroes. Also, free unblockable wide zone on any parry makes it tough for enemies to surround him constantly. His feats are nothing to laugh at either, as they are very strong support feats that benefit you and your allies. That firework feat is also a great crowd control tool. You know, I kinda laugh at everyone who told me that the indicators are useless, just watch the character animations and you'll know when to parry, because unless it's been patched, certain attacks from JJ actually hit before his character animation does. But again, that might have been patched, so it could be spewing nonsense. Otherwise, it's honestly like fighting a berserker with slower attacks and endless stamina. You have to do a lot more reading and decision making here since the unblockables can come out more frequently. But I recall reading on the comp subreddit that you can back dodge out of almost any of his attacks and mix-ups, so hey, that works. Whatever you do though, try not to run low on stamina, and by run low I mean have anything less than 3 quarters of your tank, because you don't want to get parried and lose it all to the choke. Just a note that they can't counter guard break when in Sifu stance, so if you can get close, you can put the pressure on with guard breaks there. We now move on to the hooker of the Wu Lin. <laughs> Ha 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 She's also a trap. Like all other assassins, she has lower health and a reflex guard. Nushia has access to all variations of a three hit chain, and if the finisher is a heavy, it will actually throw the opponent in the opposite direction of where it came from. Her zone attack is a little bit slower and hits the opponent's right guard, but it can be used at any time in a combo chain, which is good for throwing off opponents that are getting used to the timing. The zone attack however does end the chain, and it can be fainted. What makes Nushia unique though is her ability to trap enemies. Any heavy and the zone can be cancelled into a trap by hitting guard break. The traps only affect the enemy if they are blocking in that direction, attempting to parry in that direction, or utilize a superior block or deflect. This attack does more damage and doesn't stop chains. However, it's not hard to counter. Once you see the giant flashing light, you can throw a light attack, dodge, block a different way, and yes, even emote. Nushia has a move, scratch that, Nushia has an entire mechanic that can be countered by emoting. I hate myself. Furthermore, other assassins are particularly good at avoiding this because of the reflex guard. If their guard isn't up in any direction, they can't even be affected. Now because of all this information, her traps aren't a good opener because it's easier to react to on the first attack, but rather they work better mid or end chain. Oh yeah, Nushia has some other moves too. And all of them actually act as chain starters too. She has dash, dodge, and sprint lights, as well as deflect and parry lights. Again, that all begin combo chains. Did I mention she also has a little can can dance? Off a heavy parry, you get Nushia's special light attack that starts chains. And light parries guarantee a heavy that also starts chains. Deflects are interesting. Nushia does have a unique light attack follow-up that deals massive damage, but it's not guaranteed, it can actually be blocked. Now it's very hard to block it, and it is, I believe, entirely prediction based, but you can change the direction of the deflect attack for a higher chance of hitting if you want. Guard breaks and wall splats will give a heavy in any direction, and out of stamina parries guarantee the special light attack into heavy into light. You can do the same combo on side throws. The first attack will whiff though, but the other two will hit. There are some variations of this that Freeze goes into on his video of Nushia Punishes. You can check that out down in the description below. Now in my experience and in my honest opinion, Nushia isn't exactly a strong fighter in groups, but she is a strong fighter in groups. Let me explain. Her feats aside, she can excel in 1v1 situations, but isn't the strongest when outnumbered, obviously, again, being an assassin. I've found that her traps are only reliable when the opponent getting ganked is locked onto you, because the traps interrupt any parry attempts, but from what I've seen, it's only parry attempts against you, not your teammates. I could be wrong, but that's just what I've found. However, when these traps do land, they are good at pinning the enemy while your teammates beat on them. 
When getting ganked, I wouldn't bother going for traps because the animation takes so long that your opponent's teammates can hit you out of it before you can do any damage. But, her feats, if I'm honest, help make up for some of her combat weaknesses. Honestly, just the first feat in each tier is strong enough for her, in my opinion. You have area control with Caltrops, a good 1v1 feat with Deadly Duel, a feat that can stop people from running away, and one that infects an enemy and damages them and nearby allies. Hell, if the feats aren't even good, at least they're fun and different. Now what about when fighting Anusia? LOL JUST EMOTE SON! Really, Nushia's biggest threat is her quick light attacks. The traps are reactable and counterable once you know what you're doing. Theoretically, you could just block up until you see a trap and throw a light attack in the same or different direction to counter and swap from the defensive to the offensive. The biggest reason I see people complain about Nushia is you have to take a different mentality than you're used to. You can't mindlessly block and parry, you actually have to think and react if they're gonna counter your block or parry essentially. We end off our video with the monkey boy with a big stick and the For Honor subreddit's current biggest target, Shaolin. Similar to Aramusha and Berserker, Shaolin has an infinite combo chain under certain circumstances. As long as you alternate between light and heavy, or heavy and light attacks, Shaolin can attack until he is out of stamina, or until he uses the same type of attack twice in a row. Less similar to Aramusha now, Shaolin has a reflex guard. Shaolin also has an up to triple hit that can be done by landing and hitting a light attack three times on the left or three times on the right. Like PK's kidney stab and Shinobi's pull to the ground, each light attack must be pressed after the previous attack, you can't spam the light attack button. Now I also say up to triple because after any light or heavy attack, Holding that button down allows you to enter Shaolin's Chi Stance, meaning you can do a double light into Chi Stance rather than a triple light and end the combo. The Chi Stance is where Shaolin really shines. In this stance you have a multitude of options. Your stamina doesn't drain nor regenerate while you're in this stance by the way. You can throw a crushing light attack that, like Highlander, has superior block property and will automatically counter any standard attack in that direction if timed properly. You can throw an unblockable top heavy, or you can throw undodgeable side heavies. You can taunt, or you can kick with guard break. This can be followed up with a guaranteed light attack, or after the kick you can try for an unblockable top heavy, or sweep by hitting guard break again. Any of the heavy attacks out of Chi Stance can be cancelled. Also you can cancel out of Chi Stance, but you cannot dodge out of it. Shaolin also has dodge heavies and a dash heavy from neutral, however the dodge heavies cannot be followed up by anything or cancelled, whereas the dash heavy can be used to start combos, enter chi stance, or be cancelled. Shaolin also has a 3 hit zone attack with all attacks hitting the opponent's left guard. Any attack after the first can be cancelled. When sprinting, Shaolin has access to a kick by pressing guard break. On static guard heroes, it seems that you are guaranteed an unlocked or top light, However, I could get the double or triple light by making sure I hit where they weren't guarding. From my testing, it seems that any light, including the double or triple, is confirmed on reflex guard heroes. I've only tested this against bots though, so against players, I could be dead wrong. The kick also wall splats, so you get a free heavy for that. Before we get to Shaolin's punishes, there is one other thing I wanted to mention. At one time while in Chi Stance, Shaolin could do his top heavy unblockable and soft faint it back into Chi Stance. It looked kinda like this, but from my understanding it has been recently patched out. So just as a PSA, this is not a thing anymore. Now moving on to Shaolin's punishes. Off a heavy parry, Shaolin can get the triple light for max damage, or like I said, do the double light and go into your Chi Stance mix up. Off a light parry, Shaolin can get a heavy in any direction. You can of course continue the chain or hold it down for entering Chi Stance. As a part assassin hybrid, Shaolin has a deflect. Off this deflect, you have an unblockable heavy that can start chains or be held to enter Chi Stance. Both guard breaks and wall splats will give a heavy in any direction. Out of stamina parries and guard break back throws give you a heavy into chi stance unblockable top heavy. However, you are vulnerable to a guard break on wake up. 
A safer option is back-to-back -back heavies in any direction. You can perform that again off of a backwards throw or a parry. In 4v4s, a reflex guard and lower health may hurt Shaolin, but honestly if you can manage that, he's no pushover. Similar to Nuxia, Shaolin excels in 1v1 situations, but not similar to Nuxia, actually has better options when ganking, as well as longer range and wider attacks when getting ganked. Similar to Nuxia again though, Shaolin's feats more than make up for any weaknesses you might think he has. If I'm honest, I would say all but three of his feats in his entire kit are useful, and your choice of them really just depends on your playstyle and what you enjoy. And I'm gonna get flamed for it, but my favorite has to be the Nothing Personnel Kid. Now obviously Shaolin can be scary to go up against, because an enemy that wears a monkey mask must be all kinds of crazy, right? No, it could be because of the million and one options that he has at his disposal, but hopefully, now that you have a better understanding of his toolkit, you'll have a better chance against him, and you'll know what he can and can't do. Now when they enter Chi Stance, most Shaolins I've faced go for the kick right away can be dodged and it guarantees you a guard break if you do dodge it. If they hit it and they go for the top unblockable, there is a small parry window. However, chances are if you catch on to the kick, they'll go for the undodgeable side heavies as they are a direct counter to your counter, so bear that in mind. Try to always stay one step ahead and predict. From my testing, after entering Chi Stance, if they go for the top unblockable heavy, if you side dodge it early enough, even if they cancel it into guard break, you are still safe. So that seems to be the safest option to avoid that top heavy. One of two things will happen. A, they will throw the attack, miss, and you can guard break. Or B, they will cancel it and try to guard break you because you dodge. You can actually counter guard break that. It isn't guaranteed, but only if you dodge early enough. And that officially wraps it up. Ah, f***. Thank you as always for watching, and a huge thanks goes out to my Patreon supporters, especially Trung Lee, Bubbles PL, and Tobias Jashub. My Patreon is linked down below if you'd like to support what I do with more than just a YouTube subscription. Now there's no guarantee about another video before 2019, I will try my best though, especially with the new event that For Honor has going on right now. I hope you are all staying safe and having a wonderful holiday season, and I will see you on the next video, which is hopefully still in 2018.